guys. Trevor Oaks, thank you so much for joining us today on the Hot Stove uh, uh, Baseball Talk. And uh, a Riverside boy, I'm from Riverside myself. And I just wanted to kind of go back to when you were a kid. I mean, who did you first emulate as far as your pitching wind up? Ooh, tough question. Um, I didn't really have, like, I didn't watch a ton of baseball. I remember, um, I thought Percival was really cool. I mean, he had that massive leg kick, and my dad was a huge Angels fan, like, growing up. Nice. Um, but there wasn't a specific pitcher I would try to throw. Like, I just um, kind of took some pitching lessons from a guy who went to King High School, mm. and that's kind of how I learned, like, my, my foundational mechanics and stuff so um it was yeah it was fun i i still watched a little bit but nothing like you know a role model or anything sure sure well um you know mechanics can change as you get older and everything and and obviously i mean you had an injury the tommy john injury um i believe you were in high school was that your was that your senior year of high school it was 2011 right Yes, senior last game of my senior year for league is Ouch. when I tore it. So, yeah, not not a fun time. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I was watching an interview that you had done, and uh, um, you said you you just felt the pop, and you and you heard the pop, you felt the burning. I want to know. I mean, at that point in your career, obviously you've been successful. Kind of looking ahead to what might be on the horizon. When that injury occurred, I mean, what did that do to you mentally? Initially, what were your first thoughts? Yeah, so at that time, I was really interested in playing college baseball. And um, I hadn't been recruited by anybody. I was kind of a late bloomer, and so my velocity came really late. And, uh, you know, I was I was having a really good season, and I had gotten like a, you know, a small scholarship from Biola. Hmm. And... and I was worried, you know, is this going to be the end of my career? Like, are they going to take my scholarship away? Like, am I going to have to pay for all of that on my own now? So there were there were a lot of concerns. And then just from my parents, too, like we had never gone through a serious injury like that before. So it was kind of new territory for us as well. And just trying to make that decision after hearing from the doctor, like, hey, this is going to take 12 to 18 months. Hmm. So you're not going to be able to play your first your freshman year of college. So that was – a big wake up call for sure. Now, how do you get through that? I, I mean, 18 year old, 17, 18 year old guy, um, you know, that's a lot on your plate. I mean, were there, were there days where you said, you know what, this, this, this might not work out and maybe I should just move on. Yeah. I think for me, like a big motivation was I wanted to be able to play catch and, and teach my kids how to play someday. You know, that was like something that I, that I had talked to my dad about. And that was like something that he wanted to give to me and make sure that was going to happen. And so I really relied on my support from my family and friends. I had a good friend, um, Caleb Dirks, who had gone through the surgery before. And mm -hmm. so he was a big help in that and just kind of showing me what it's like going through the rehab process. And there were definitely days where like I was, sad because baseball can sometimes become your identity you know you're sure. successful and and you're having a good time you're you finally get to the next level and and so when that's taken away you're like well, who am i now like what am i supposed to do and so there was a lot of like soul searching for sure so but i think overall i came out a better person and baseball player um so that was a huge part of my career for sure oh absolutely um yeah, that can really uh, be a lesson in patience and might not have been a time that you wanted to learn that, but might have been the time that you needed to learn that. Now, I wonder if, um, and we were talking about mechanics earlier, did you have to relearn mechanics? Did you have to make adjustments to your mechanics before you started throwing again? Or did you kind of go back to the same mechanics? Maybe it wasn't a mechanical flaw. It was just that one, you know, crazy curveball that, that popped the elbow and, and uh, you know, ha had you get the Tommy John surgery. What were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I kind of, I had watched some of my video in high school just from like my recruiting video and I had this big long pause in my delivery and so I was kind of like thinking to myself like, hey, if looking forward and saying like, what type of pitcher do I want to become? Do I want to have that awkward like pause? And now I was like, no, that doesn't look right. Like I know 
what pitchers look like, and that's not it. So sure. I kind of had to relearn some things and, and said to myself, like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna change this a little bit. And, you know, going through the rehab process, the first time you pick up a ball, is, it's really weird. Like, you kind of feel it's like a new – a new motion completely. So, um, you know, you're, I had a therapist that had done this with a lot of baseball players. And so he was kind of helping me say like, Hey, that release looked like you pushed the ball a little bit, make sure you stay on top. And so that really helped me out a lot. It seemed a little odd to be going and getting that surgery that you, you know, because you weren't a professional or, or, um, or did it just seem like, you know, Hey, I, I want to get this done for, like you said, being able to play catch with my kids down the road. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't know. I heard there was like a big with the surgery. And so I thought like, you know, there's a good chance I'll be able to play again, but I wasn't sure what my velocity would be like at the end of it. You know, how far or how much longer am I going to be able to play baseball? Cause it's a reconstructive surgery. It's not just, sure like a, a scope and they clean you out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there was, there was a lot of uncertainty, but at the same time, like I had Dr. Yoakum, um, mm. who has, has passed away now, but he's a really well-known doctor for that surgery. Yes. And so just being in Southern California was really helpful. Um, getting that connection, like, um, you know, he's, he was an amazing doctor for sure. So I, I think a large part of that is, due to him you know it, it's an awesome situation to get some of the best hands on you if you're gonna have to go through it absolutely absolutely uh trevor we'll move on to a little more happier topics here i don't want to uh, talk about tommy john uh, the whole time here get you bummed out or anything but i mean you're a hometown kid you know from riverside obviously i mean you said your dad was an angel fan you might not have been a huge dodger fan but you at least knew vin scully as we play baseball and we're kids, you know, we always have that dream and, and, and now you're about to live it. But I just want to know, how would you have wanted Vin Scully to describe Trevor Oaks? You know, you're, you're on there on the mound. You're, you're out there for the first time. Pass the stats, pass the numbers. Vin Scully is going to give us a tidbit of your life. What would you want Vin Scully to, to tell us about you? That's a good question. Um I would want him to say that, you know, I'm, I've kind of been the underdog, you know, the, the kid who came from small schools. I went to a division five high school with, you know, 92 kids in my graduating class sure. to an NAIA school and then to a division two school. You know, most of the guys that you see in, in the MLB have gone to division one programs and, yeah. uh, or they're, you know, top first round picks. So, that would be something that I would want him to say for sure. And just that I'm really efficient, you know, that I kind of pride myself on going deep into ball games and being efficient. And that's, I want to be a good teammate to the bullpen guys. I want to show them like, Hey, I'm going to do my best to get you to, to seven innings. And then you guys can take it from there. And like, I'm going to compete my butt off until, you know, I can't throw anymore for that day. So um, that's, yeah, that's, those are basically the two things that I would like him to say. Awesome. Awesome. H had you ever thought about that? I mean, had you, had you ever, you know, put that to into your mind or a little bit? Well, kind of at the beginning of this last season, I didn't think that I would have made it to AAA by any means, but sure. once I was, was in AAA and there was kind of like some buzz going around that they needed some starting pitching. I was thinking, you know, this could, I could perhaps be pitching with Vince Scully's like last year of announcing, you know, yeah. like this last season. So I was like really trying hard to, <laughs> to get up there and unfortunately it didn't happen, but that would have been awesome. Yeah. I thought about it a little bit. Well, you know what, speaking of your uh, move through the minor leagues last year, that was tremendous, Trevor. I mean, from single a double a and triple a, and it's not like, I mean, when you hear the stats 14 and three with a 2.74 or 2.76 ERA, I mean, you, you, I thought at first, well, he probably tore up Rancho Cucamonga, you know, and went up and caught a couple starts in the other. No, you barely, you started in Rancho Cucamonga, had four starts, and then you uh, you were an all-star for Tulsa in double A. And uh, I mean, how much does that reinforce in your mind that you belong or that you're where you should be, Trevor? Yeah, I feel like. I'm always able to throw strikes. I'm always able to keep it down in the zone. For me, it's just a matter of 
you know, getting that weak contact and, and just improving my stuff. Um, so I was very happy with this year, but at the same time, like, slightly disappointed just because of the injury at the end of the season. And, you know, I, I felt like I I could have competed at the big league level this year and, and contributed to the team. And, you know, for some, for whatever reason, it's just not the right timing yet, but I'm uh, preparing now for that. And I think mentally it's nice to have this off season to, to get my mindset going and saying like, okay, like I'm probably going to start the year in triple a and, and I'm just going to work my butt off to get to the big league level. And, and when I get there, just do whatever I can to keep the ball down and, and, you know, keep the team in the game. So sure, it, it's been a fun, fun season so far for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I, just doing the research and looking at those stats. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot to those stats. I mean, you know, just besides the 14 and three, you know, over five to one is your strikeout to walk ratio. I mean, do you consider yourself a control pitcher or, or something else? Um, yeah, I would, I would say control pitcher. I'm definitely not a strikeout pitcher, but, um, you know, I'd like to, my goal is to improve my off speed stuff so I can get my strikeout numbers up a little bit. I think that's one thing like the front office would like to see as well. So that's why we're trying to add the splitter. Mm. Uh, but for me, just getting that weak contact and keeping the ball on the ground is so crucial. I just try to be as efficient as I can. So that means, you know, keeping my pitch count under 15 pitches every inning. Sure. And if, if somebody gets on and they get a hit, okay, so what? Like I know I'm only one pitch away from getting a double play. And the benefits of that is every level you go up, the defense gets better too. So, Certainly. I mean, I give a lot of credit to my teammates, like from this past season, because like obviously I'm not striking out the guys, so they're making the plays and – and scoring the runs and I'm just doing what I can to keep the team in the game. So that record, yeah, it means a lot to me, but at the same time, like it's a culmination of a group effort. And I think those guys did a tremendous job from, you know, day one till the last day. So it's been fun playing with them for sure. When you had that 11 strikeout game, I was watching that video, your pitches were really breaking. I mean, I know you said you were working on the splitter, but, those look like uh, sinkers to me. Correct me if I'm wrong. Those were your sinkers, right? Yeah. So every, I mean, every fastball that I throw that comes into a right-handed batter is my sinker. And then this season I added a cutter. And for some reason that day, I just kind of had a little more tilt on my cutter. So it was coming out of the same plane and just going the, the same break, just the opposite side. And so, you know, I could, I could, throw my sinker that day on the outside corner and bring it back, or I could throw a cutter there and make it break off the plate. And that's what was really effective. It just, it was harder for the guys to see which way it was going to go. Um, so we, we just decided like, Hey, let's exploit that and keep using what's working. You yeah. Know? So it was a fun day. It was one of the best days of my career so far. So. Yeah. I, w I was watching it um, as many pitches as I, as I could get. And they, you look nasty. I mean, the guys were, I mean, they were swinging and missing by a lot. And uh, even when they were hitting it, uh, it was pretty weak. And so I imagine you do uh, create a lot of ground ball double plays then for yourself. Yeah, that's one thing I, I do. That's a stat that I really like looking at is I try to be, you know, a, a ground ball double play guy, I try to lead the league in double plays. I don't know if it worked out, but <laughs> that's one thing I try to do. Certainly. Well, you know, growing up, I watched the great Oral Hershey's, the Bulldog, and uh, you talk about a control pitcher, a sinker ball pitcher who induced a lot of ground ball double plays. If you could be half the pitcher Oral Hershey's was, wow, what a blessing you would be for this uh, Dodger staff in the 2017 year. 